Well, the other day we assembled this kit that I bought direct from the manufacturer. It just happens to be that the manufacturer was me. Obviously, you all know that. So now the goal is to take this hub and hoist it up onto this rack. And I think this is about where the, the height of the hub is going to be. And I'm going to assemble the spokes into the hub. This will allow me to access both sides of the hub and to tighten these bolts as I assemble these spokes. But I'd like to get a weight on what this hub is with the bolts assembled. We had about 335, I think, with the hub core and the flanges without the bolts. I'm kind of curious what it weighs now with 24 7 8 bolts. Well, the center of this hub is five and a quarter inches. The other hub happens to be five and a half. They should be the same, but I did ask them about their axles, if they were correlating, and they say that they are. So we're gonna go ahead and use these hubs. This is the bar that I use to pick bodies up off of undercarriages. You've seen me use it a number of times. I have these hooks on both ends. It's gonna allow me to use my overhead hoist and pick this up and put it on my stand, or in this case, we're going to put it on my scale. I'm going to get my stand out of the way. Remove my bar for the moment. Kind of centered up there. Get that free enough so that I don't include the weight of that bar. So I'll add a 200. Another hundred, so that'll be three hundred. That's out to fifty. It weighs more than three fifty. Put on another fifty. Right about there, we're looking at three fifty plus twenty two. 372 pounds on that hub. Well, 372, we'll put this up on my stand. Out there. attached just for backup safety purposes. Well, this is the inside corner that I need to round out the end of these spokes to accommodate. I'd like the bottom of this spoke to shoulder right up against this face. And right now it starts to hit that round spot at roughly five eighths, it's over half. So I'm thinking on two sides that I need to come back about five eighths of an inch in there so. And round this over clear around including this corner so that it will shoulder right up and allow this to set up against this face.
Yeah, that shoulders up like it should. That round over allows for these corners. I think that's exactly what I want. Well, on the other end is going to be where the tenon goes, and this is the largest spoke cone, sometimes called a pointer, that I have. And it's going to be right there at its maximum limit on putting the point on these spokes. So I might just find the center and draw a circle probably inch and a half. These tenons are going to be inch and three quarter because that's the largest tenon auger that I have. So let me find the center here. Either two and seven eighths, so an inch and seven sixteenths. An inch and a half, half of that is three quarter. You say my tenon is actually going to be inch and three quarter, but I like the point to be a little smaller than that so that I can start my tenon auger comfortably. I might just try sanding that down. So to begin assembly of these, this would go against the inside core. It's going to want to hit both bolts because it's going to have to be drilled out. So I'm going to have to remove these two. And that's going to fit in like so. If I can kind of put some pressure on that. So to get the bolt back in, I'm going to have to drill it out through this spoke corner here. So I should actually put the next one in as well, so I drill both shoulders at the same time. Oh, looks like I'll have to take this one out as well. Next spoke could go there. Maybe I need another clamp here. Make sure these are bottomed out. This one isn't yet. I've got it clamped a little too tight. See, I have this one shouldered up, but this one I don't. Must have a burr in there or something. Oh, I see. That's why you do tests. Now I see it. So as this first spoke bottoms out, you can say it's protruding into the space of the next spoke. So I need to take and bevel this corner off of both sides because they're going to interfere with each other. You can see where the second spoke was pushing up against this first spoke. So I'm going to have to bevel those off as well. Yeah, see where it's hitting there. So these opposite corners are going to have to be beveled off. So now as I look at the inside of the outer flange, I can see it. You can see the bevel coming in here to this point here. So they need to be beveled back about an inch and a half to come back to this point as shown on the castings. So 360, 12 spokes, each of these should be 30 degrees.
So now when I put the bevel on these spokes inside the hub, now you can see where they're going to come together, not interfere with each other. So 12 spokes into 360, these are 30 degrees. So I took 15 degrees on both spokes to add up to our 30 degrees, and that seems to fit just about right. So I took a black marker and put a line here at 15 degrees and kind of a stop reference. So as I'm going to put these in, I can run them at about there to get somewhat of a consistent angle. I'm not sure these have to be super precise. I just want that clearance between spokes. Well, I'm glad I had a couple of test spokes to see how it's going to go before I actually messed up a real good spoke. I think that'll be the combination. I should be able to drill through this one, put a bolt through there, and just progressively work around. I may do an opposite pair so that I keep this flange kind of balanced out and parallel to each other. Well, there's my first 12 marked out for the placement of my tenons. So these are all 48 spokes that I've got shaped on the hub end and also tapered on the other end that's going to take the tenons to go into the fellies. So if you remember when I cut these out for blanks from my rough stock inventory, I just used a chainsaw to cut these out at 55 and a half. The end with the tenon that goes into the outside rim isn't that big a deal that it's square but I did want the face of these that go into the hub square so that they shut up square against that shoulder inside that casting. So I guess now it's time just to see if we can put all these together and make it look like a wheel.
Well, we're halfway together on one wheel. I'll do the second set the same, and you can tell they're going to come together out at the tire. When a wheel is put together with just the hubs and the spokes, it's called the spider. This is one big spider, huh? Appreciate you following along. We'll keep on picking away. Thanks for watching.